I uh, want to extend my congratulations to uh, Joe Biden and Kamala Harris, the 46th and 49th President and Vice President of the United States. I also want to say good luck and welcome to the incoming senators and congressmen and women into the Capitol and to the incoming new legislature. Wish you all well to the uh, incoming cabinet members and to the White House communications team. So, even during the election, um, and even until now, there has been talks about Biden's voting record, especially on foreign policy. And there had been questions about the record on Kamala Harris when she was California's Attorney General, especially facing some of the controversies. But now that they're in office, let's see how they will do. And what matters is what they will do as President and Vice President. Those um, uh, days of their a record have been long gone and uh, what matters now is what they will do during the uh, administration so I'm here with my fellow political juggernaut of course none other than my dad Sam and Hello. he's gonna express his thoughts about the new Biden administration on how Biden is handling things from domestic and foreign policies, and, of course, the COVID pandemic. Yeah. Go ahead. Well, uh, first off, the, the COVID uh, uh, pandemic, the state where we are right now is because in the previous administration, there was no resolve, there was no commitment, there was no serious uh, effort to really contain the the pandemic mm -hmm. it was like all false information being fed to the public that say no this thing will go away and we don't want testing because the more testing done it will register that more people are positive and it's bad for you know uh it's bad for the country or bad for the election campaign you know things like that and then when it comes to uh to foreign policy uh, we were really at our lowest in terms of respect uh, by the international community. Mm. Um, I remember telling you that uh, um, I read an article uh, or a column in uh, one of those uh, mainstream media saying that Angela Merkel is now the leader of the free world mm -hmm. because United States was nowhere to be found when it comes to leadership in world crisis in uh, you know diplomacy and it was a terrible uh, four years and mm -hmm. also uh, the, the the economy wasn't uh, really that strong as people perceived because they were looking at they were you know the Trump administration was looking at Wall Street as this this as the economy which mm -hmm. was as uh, been contested by many uh, uh, economists and uh, financial uh, strategists that no, it's not the same. The national economy is not the same as the Wall Street, you know, the Dow Jones Industrial Average. So, but uh, what really concerned me uh, most uh, during the four years was uh, the um, inability of the United States to lead mm -hmm. in the international community. You know, like we pulled out on every international agreement, um, the climate accord, and and not uh, really protecting uh, our allies. Mm -hmm. uh, we were pulling out, an example, we pulled out our troops from... Uh, the Kurds. From, from Kurdistan uh, to make concession with, uh, with Turkey. Mm -hmm. uh, during the time, uh, the last days of, uh, during the last years of Obama, when Russia invaded uh, 
uh, Crimea, mm-hmm. uh, Putin got emboldened uh, because Trump became the next president and he was, uh, you know, favoring uh, Russia all the time. And plus, uh, of course, Russia played part on the election in 2016. Yes. The... And so that's why uh, that's why then the 45th president was, uh, you know, making deals with uh, Russia because, of course, they're close buddies yeah imagine uh, the your own our u.s intelligence community saying that that russia you know uh, hacked uh, our system uh, you know, there were attacks on our on our uh, secure networks government networks you know, like the pentagon the secret uh, u.s sec the the state department the the Department of Commerce, Department of Health, uh, computers were were attacked uh, by hackers, and the uh, intelligence community said it was the Russian. And what yeah. would uh, Trump say? Well, I asked my buddy uh, Vladimir Putin, and he said no, we were not the one, and I have no reason to not believe him. It was, uh, you know, um, government uh, career officials uh, were so demoralized. Uh, even the military, the intelligence community, the FBI, they were all demoralized uh, under Trump. Because these are professional people. Yeah. They make it their, uh, their commitment, their life mission to protect the country mm-hmm. uh, from... Uh, from enemies uh, foreign and domestic yeah so, and now the domestic uh, the domestic uh, enemies were flourishing yeah under trump and the fbi couldn't do anything because uh, the justice those, department uh, those white supremacist groups mm-hmm, and their mm-hmm. william barr wouldn't do it <clears throat> but if it was up to christopher ray the mm-hmm. fbi director he wanted those uh, you know Uh, people investigated and arrested if they committed a crime, but William Barr is the boss of Christopher yeah. Ray, the yeah. FBI director. So but Ray did a good job on cracking down on the uh, domestic terrorists that uh, attempted to uh, uh, assassinate uh, the Michigan governor um, Gretchen Whitmer. Yes, and because you know. Uh, Uh, Christopher Ray, Director Ray, is uh, he is a career uh, uh, official in in the FBI. Mm-hmm. That's why uh, I I I don't think uh, uh, President Biden has a plan to replace him anytime soon. You know, he's he's a he's a true uh, you know professional. He's done a good job mm-hmm. as FBI director since mm-hmm. uh, he since his appointment. <clears throat> Since his the the confirmation of his uh, appointment. Yeah, and this is a guy who would who would not say, yeah, well, the president said this and that, and that's true. Okay, he, Christopher Ray couldn't, uh, William Barr couldn't rein in on Christopher Ray, because he knows Christopher Ray is uh, is a professional. Mm-hmm. You know? He's a law enforcement professional, and that's why when they say. Was there? Uh, I wanted the in, the FBI. Trump was saying, "I wanted the FBI <laughs> to investigate the the massive fraud." <laughs> Christopher Ray said there was no fraud. We had the cleanest election. You know, the election was fair and clean. Yeah. And they said, Trump said, "You know, I cannot believe uh, these people are not backing me up, <laughs> backing you up on your QAnon theories." Your, uh, you know, uh, conspiracy theories like, <laughs> like he he thinks everybody can just act like Rudy Giuliani, yeah. who would tell him, who would obey or and say and echo whatever he's saying and mm-hmm. all the lies from the QAnon, you know, advisors, uh, the Trump like, you know, and then the people at the uh, uh, Fox and Friends, yeah, yeah, that's that's his daily dose of advisors. The mm-hmm. Fox and Friends, you know, in the morning, like, and then, and all the tweeting, you know, it's just ridiculous. Yeah. Uh, but sad, you know. So, uh, do you, so as a fellow juggernaut, like, I agree that uh, Trump, 
I believe is the most selfish U.S. president in U.S. history. Uh, do you also believe that he is the most selfish president in U.S. history? I do. No doubt about it. Mm -hmm. He doesn't care about anyone. Even if you were his former friend, once you don't do what he wants, you're, uh, you're just a coffee boy yeah. to him. Mm -hmm. It's just like when he demeaned Michael <clears throat> Cohen in Fox and Friends and all of a sudden... Uh, Cohen backstabbed him. <laughs> and then, so, you know, it was, it was nothing. It was just a coffee boy. <laughs> but he was actually his, his confidant. He was his lawyer. He, he was his uh, enforcer, you know. You know, he always uses the court, uh, you know, filing lawsuit to, to, to terrorize and intimidate people. And Yeah. And, uh, and, like, even those who are loyal to Trump or... You know, even those close, closer to him, mm -hmm. he doesn't care. He will backstab them anyway. And we've seen this even on the past, uh, yeah, uh, the, especially the allegations that have been coming out. The most high profile was Jeff Session. Yeah. Senator Jeff Session became his attorney general. But this guy still has the, the, the respect for the law. Mm -hmm. He said, no, I'm going to recuse in the Russia investigation uh, by the special counsel. And boy, you are disloyal to me because you recused. And from that time on, Jeff Session was his like, uh, you know, every, wherever he goes, Trump would badmouth Jeff Session. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and so no loyalty to anyone, you know. Mm -hmm. Even in, towards the end, you know, when William Barr uh, quit and said, no, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna be going around the country uh, preaching uh, about your election fraud. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And he didn't like it. Like, okay, if he doesn't do it, just like say, if Mike Pence wouldn't do it, well, I'm not gonna like him very much. Yeah. You know, <laughs> we we had always been against Trump during the election. In the primaries, we were against Trump on the general election. We were against Trump when he became president. And we were against Trump during the course of his presidency. Uh, we were against Trump even during the Democratic primaries in 2020. We were against Trump in the general election. Uh, we were against Trump on his uh, claims of election fraud. Mm -hmm. We were uh, against Trump uh, when the uh, uh, rioters broke in into the Capitol. And now we have always been against Trump. Well, who uh, would, the only people who would not be against Trump are but, either... But uh, mm -hmm. hold on, mm -hmm. uh, hold on. And... We see the people who supported Trump and voted for him because they believed in him. They fell for his lies. They believed that he was going to do all these things. Um, you, you name it all. And uh, some were even... There were those who backed down or turned on Trump during the course of his presidency. Especially with the trade war and all of his aggressive behavior on uh, U.S. policies, both domestic and foreign. And of course, um, be, there were people who were still going to vote for Trump in the 2020 election. And there were those who voted for Trump in 2016, turned on him on his, the course of his presidency, and uh, voted against Trump on the 2020 election. And there were those who voted for uh, Trump in the 2020 election, and yet uh, backstabbed him or turned their backs on him when the rioters broke into the Capitol. Mm -hmm. And and until now, there are still crazy people out there who will still support this crazy guy uh, ever since uh, his presidency and uh, over the course when they voted for him in 2016. Yeah, so and the sad thing about it is that uh, uh, a big portion, <clears throat> a big portion of the pie, of, you know, of this uh, Trump supporters are white christian evangelicals yeah who would uh who can't see what is evil you know they believe in their own lies that trump is sent by god you know just like <clears throat> you know i hate to make the comparison it's, it's okay go ahead keep going if, if if they will say that hitler was was you know was made by you know was actually made by god to to be uh a ruthless ruler it's like how could you there will be I mean, people who will agree with you into this so mm -hmm. i cannot blame you for saying this but that is a good analogy 
this white evangelicals, in order to advance their agenda, would say anything, and their parishioners will believe it. Yeah. Okay. That oh no yeah we actually we heard stories that there was a prophecy that when when uh, Trump uh, was still uh, in his in uh, his mother's womb that he will become a president and so he's like chosen by God you know <laughs> chosen by God was chosen by uh, I mean God allowed it uh, to happen you know just like in the book of Job but God didn't make him uh, president. Yeah. It was like people who uh, who doesn't think, people who got fooled, people who uh, like the Russian uh, interference through misinformation and disinformation, you know, the active measures, things like that. Yeah. So, anyway. And uh, they still do, in spite of the attack on our democracy. And many of these uh, white evangelical preachers are like, you know, You know, Trump had to prevail no matter what. You know, like that uh, that lady pastor who was summoning spirits. Uh, in the next, Reverend Paula White. You know, spirit from Africa, spirit from South America. You know, they're coming, they're coming to defend Trump. Like hypocrites, oh and goodness. these are the people that are demeaning. These are the people that are demeaning these people from these countries and support a president who called these countries uh, uh, caution curse word shithole countries. Mm. And then it's like, you know, um, and they're supposed to be Christians, but this white evangelical Christians. And they allow the president to strip children away from their, from their moms, you know, and separate them at the border. What kind of Christian are you? Yeah. Who would they, allow they, that and say nothing? Yeah, and, they, and some justifying it. <clears throat> okay, so anyway... And, and 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 it's believed that Biden is doing his uh, best to uh, overturn those policies that yeah, Trump. Yeah, it, it's because that's not what what America is about. America is, you know, our leadership in the world uh, transcends to how we treat our immigrants, how we treat other people worldwide. Okay? And go ahead. That's what makes America a great na- a great uh, nation. We are a collection of nations, you mm-hmm. know, of races from all over the world, of different cultures. Yeah. That's what, Amer- uh, as one president uh, said, that's what make America strong, our diversity. I believe it was President Obama who said that. I believe so. Mm-hmm. And uh, mm-hmm. America had always been great, even before Trump's rhetoric and his slogan, Make America Great Again. And We uh, have been great, right? You are right, correct. Yeah. Uh, and so, anyway... And speaking of uh, migrants and diversity, yeah, um, actually, it's not just the United States. The whole American continent is a diverse uh, mm-hmm. continent, or what they say in other words, the uh, the whole Western Hemisphere, because the American continent is actually a group of different ethnicities. It's not like just one ethnicity or the other, or one culture or the other. Uh, the American continent is full of cultures and uh, ethnicities, mm-hmm. and plus, you know, the uh, uh, first of all, the indigenous culture mm-hmm. uh, brought upon by the uh, Polynesians who sailed into the Americas from the Pacific, uh, from the uh, the so-called the trade winds. Yeah, and there are stories uh, coming out that the uh, 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 some Africans sailed in to the Americas before prior to the slave European mm-hmm. the prior to the European explorers and plus the slave trade mm-hmm. and plus you know uh, the in southern parts of the Americas of course you got a mix of like indigenous Amerindian and I forgot the other ethnicity group and plus you know the the four the descendants of the colonial settlers the Spaniards and the Portuguese mm-hmm. and of course you know the blacks have been there in the Americas prior and before the uh, slave trade. They were also transplanted to the Americas. Huh? Yeah. So, so pretty much... Besides the indigenous like the Incas and uh, the Aztecs and things like that. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, it's... Uh, you know, there is no stopping uh, what the... You know, what the white... Americans are wa- and white evangelicals are fearing that America is changing in in color. <laughs> There's no stopping that, you know. It's like uh, that is the the beauty of our diversity in the United States. Uh, we are a collection 
abrasions and uh, uh, if they think that they're gonna go back to the to the 1600s and the 1700 America where all the whites were whites were only the one walking on the city and the natives are secluded uh, in on the mountains and on the hills or like, what they call reservations which reservations, I don't reservations yeah. uh, later that was after the you know yeah the civil war it, it's not gonna go back okay if you want uh, uh, that mo to, to balance uh, the race then you know uh, uh, white Americans will have to to raise more children yeah okay? so how do you think Biden has handled the uh, pandemic so far? I think he is uh, trying his best and uh, I agree with uh, all the uh, policies he's making about making the mask mandatory. Yeah. I'm mm -hmm. protecting, I'm wearing a mask because I'm in proximity with my friend here. Oh, and, and plus... Then, uh, uh, but I have to protect him by wearing a mask yeah mm -hmm. and uh, i have my mask here in which speaking of that i will wear it for safety reasons mm. it's so, okay as long as one of us is wearing and the other one you know yeah but you know it it he gets protected too mm -hmm. but you know people wear masks not because it's a political <clears throat> statement but because it it's common sense it's safety reasons mm -hmm. and we see the people who had been mostly politicizing the <clears throat> pandemic are mostly coming from people on the right, not from people on the left. Yes, look at the, you know, and, and most of the, you know, the, um, after the 2000, uh, uh, 2020, after the 2020 election, mm -hmm. when uh, people were uh, objecting to the wearing of the mask in, in uh, Republican, uh, you know, uh, rallies and things like that. Mm -hmm. There was the ones that their uh, their plan uh, has skyrocketed. Yeah, especially here in the state of Nevada, since we're from, there were cases of uh, each uh, each county where the uh, pandemic skyrocketed. Yeah, and because it's not it's and it's not literally not in here Vegas. in Las Vegas, but the northern part in which uh, like were Reno, Esmeralda County. You know, those uh, um, areas uh, where uh, Republicans uh, are on higher registration than Democrats, mm -hmm. they refuse to wear masks. And yeah. then, uh, they are the ones that, that uh, s suffered with a lot of casualties. Yeah. And thanks to Mr. 45th President who uh, threw away Obama's pandemic playbook and plus uh kicked out the pandemic team and closed down a pandemic uh, uh situation uh, room i guess i would say yeah, no other than the donald himself yeah that's why you know when COVID came COVID cases rose here in the u.s became the highest in the world yes and sadly we were we are number one the united states is number one on the list on travel bans in in almost every country around the world because we're the highest in death rate and in infection rate yeah so uh, mm. yeah and uh, that's why there have been hysterias about covid cases posit tested positives and whatever you name it all mm. so there yeah so, so uh, in, we have to take a break uh, for our sponsors and then uh, and then uh, we'll say uh, I'm going to be oh, joining you in your next edition. Oh, mm -hmm. and uh, there's one thing. So, um, the night before Biden's inauguration was the uh, state of the state address of the state of Nevada by Nevada State Governor Steve Sisolak. And uh, what are you, uh, how, how, how well do you think that house, well, how, how well do you, how, how well did does my uh, opinion on, uh, Steve Sisolak been handling as governor? Oh yeah, Governor Sisolak, uh, he was one of the earliest governor to impose a uh, lockdown mm -hmm. in the western states. Okay, um, as early as April eighteen, mm -hmm. uh, Las Vegas was already on lockdown, uh, and that's why the the while 
the death rate in other states were already in uh, triple digits. We had like, you know, 164, 216 deaths in the entire Nevada. Mm -hmm. While it was already in thousands in, in other uh, states. Mm -hmm. uh, it was because uh, the governor acted swiftly. Mm -hmm. You know, not like Florida that they have to sue in court because the mayors cannot impose uh, they don't want the mayor to impose masks especially that ridiculous uh, hearing in uh, uh, that city in Florida about the so-called mandating of masks I yeah. think you probably heard that the hearing and, I, and uh, if you watch that hearing it's kind of ridiculous like, but like the governor suing the mayor of Tampa the governor suing the mayor of uh, of Miami because no you cannot impose mask okay only the state can impose mask and he is the state because he's yeah. the governor uh -huh. but that's ridiculous so that's why now mm -hmm. uh, a few months later hundred thousand dead mm -hmm. you know uh, I don't know uh, what the count is now in in Florida I think it's like what 48,000 or somewhere there mm -hmm. so uh, how do you think uh, what can you say about uh, uh, Steve Sisolak as governor since uh, 2019? Well, Governor Sisolak actually has, uh, you know, the courage that Governor Sandoval has. Mm -hmm. If there has to be an increase in taxes, there will be increase in taxes, like in sales tax, in mining tax, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, subject matters that we're off limits to to politicians they don't want to touch it because mm -hmm. they're they're afraid of not being reelected mm -hmm. but governor sisolak you know is always you know he's proactive he's very involved in you know the day-to-day -day life of uh, uh what is uh what's going on with the population what's going on with the the people in the state not just democrat or republican is it's like a, a governor for, for all the people of, uh, of Nevada. That's what I can say about him. Mm -hmm. I think Cecilak is doing a good job as governor, mm -hmm. though there are people who are pinpointing at him for the uh, pandemic and plus other things that kind of makes him look like, look weak. But I think, he, I think he is doing a good job as governor so far in an overall. Yeah, he is actually, you know. Uh, the... Uh, as far as I could, uh, I can see, uh, Governor Sisolak is uh, is the governor for uh, the kind of crisis that we have. Yeah, and you I know? think, and as a fellow Las Vegas myself, I think he's doing a good job as governor, especially on handling the situation of the pandemic. Yeah, the same thing I could say about Governor Sandoval, except that Governor Sandoval didn't have like a pandemic crisis. Yeah. So this is our tougher... Uh, a tougher situation for a governor yeah so uh thank you all for all participating and uh we will see you on the next you know, video if you yeah, have ahead. comment feel free to you know <laughs> yeah <laughs> to make a comment. so this is our thoughts about the new biden administration and plus uh, our thoughts about uh as nevadans how steve sisolak is handling things as nevada state governor so. Okay, happy watching the Super Bowl. <laughs> Cheers. <laughs>